It's been called America's first fruit. Autumn's scarlet harvest, one of the agricultural world's most spectacular displays. The Bay State is where it all began for over a century, the undisputed capital of the cranberry world. They used to joke about it being considered red gold. But that was before the crash. A barrel of berries today commands only about a third of what it did 25 years ago. If we break even, it's a good year. It was questionable whether we were going to be able to keep this property in the family. Still, tradition dies hard, and many refuse to relent. It gets in your blood, and then you're doing it no matter what. You just can't help it. Call it the Commonwealth's passion fruit, the tiny berry more powerful than any balance sheet. You know why I don't give it up? Stupidity because of my heart and my head. Stupidity, emotions and stupidity, and that's what keeps me going. I love what I do. This is Chronicle on WCVB Channel 5. It all comes down to this. A few short days will tell Annie Walker whether a year's hard labor has paid off. I work all year making the product, and we're open for 10 days. I know, that's crazy, right? Annie's crannies are harvested, packaged, and sold from her farm stand on a quiet back road in Dennis in five short weekends. There's not many farmers that are as small as I am that can make it. It's just too little land. Walker is a 12th generation Cape Codder. Her small farm in Dennis once owned by Henry Hall, the inventor of cranberry farming. Dennis is the birthplace of the cultivated cranberry. We celebrated 200 years in 2016. Walker's bogs are dry picked. The berries plucked off their vines by hand-driven machine. But this humble operation comes with a rather glitzy backstory. It's the bog that Broadway paid for. <laughs> You see, Annie Walker spent a number of years as a successful Broadway wardrobe supervisor. By 1995, she was burned out and took a three-month leave from the hit Broadway show, Crazy For You. Annie came back home to Dennis and started digging ditches in the bogs. And my brother said the dirtier I got, the bigger my smile got. And I knew I had to get one of these things. Annie traded in the bright lights for the old family bog. Which belonged to my grandfather. Now you're gonna make me cry. <laughs> So it belonged to my grandfather, and his last year of picking it was 1959. So I bought it, and I restored it. Blood ties run thick in the bogs. Three generations of wards take a page from the children's classic Polar Express to make their own annual ritual at harvest time. First cranberry of the season! It is definitely a family affair. Everything we do, we, we try to make it a fun family event. Steve Wart, his son Justin, and Father Dick all have their own cranberry bogs in Carver. But you'd hardly know it, they're always in each other's business. It's so all working together, and we're always looking for reasons to get together and farming does that for us. But the brotherhood of the bog, as it were, is more than just a family affair. Steve Ward found that out when his pumps broke in the middle of a freezing night, a disaster that could have spelled doom for his crop. Local cranberry farmers rushed in to help Ward out. There were guys coming out of the woodwork to help me out with their portable pumps. It was, it was very touching. Annie Walker found herself in a similar fix last year. We had four and five inches of ice on this whole place, and my berries were still out there. A sudden freeze had Annie's crannies in desperate straits. And now it's a few days before Thanksgiving, and I still don't have my berries to market. We were in trouble. Now I'm going to cry again. Word went out, sorry. Word went out, and uh, growers came from all over the Cape very moving. So you talk about fraternity. These guys came with their trucks to haul my berries, picking machines. It was very moving. Very, very cool <laughs> to get that support.
Since the harvest ended, Annie Walker says she has been busy building equipment for her bees. She sells their honey in her gift shop along with other products. She says the shop helps keep her farm operation afloat. Despite the long tradition of growing cranberries here in Massachusetts, Wisconsin has now taken over the title of the largest cranberry growing state in the U.S. Next, reclaiming a family farm.